Hey, what's up, what's up, what's up? How you doing? How you been? What's going on? What's good? Oh, you getting it in? Somebody's getting it for you. <laughs> what's good, <gonna be> people? <laughs> Ooh, what's good, people? It was a day of a day whenever we call Monday. Anybody been said, what's good, people? Oh, can you believe how fast these weeks are going by? I mean, just a couple of days ago, I was saying Friday, well, a couple of days, of course, it was Friday, but... Friday now, I went back to my, and it would have been said, um, saw the housewives of Atlanta and stuff like that, and, you know, Nene and stuff like that, I thought it was going to be a breakthrough, but she cracked her face. <laughs> she cracked her face in the end, and she was like, mm, stay, well, Nene, and it would have been said, I thought it was hilarious. Anyway, that being said, um, I had said I was going to report to you in reference to, um, a young suicide teen which committed suicide, and today's the day that I'm going to talk in reference to that. Okay, we have a young teen that committed suicide by the name of, okay, of course my notes, okay, a young teen by the name of Cameron Langrell, Langrell, oh, I'm pronouncing it right, I'm, not, I'm butchering, I'm sorry, Cameron, anyway, they were born in 2000 and they committed suicide in 2015, which means that makes the age of 15 years old, however, they were, um, from Rachel, um, and she was a trans girl. She decided she was she decided she was going to be a trans woman and stuff like that at the age of 15. So she changed her name on the Facebook and stuff like that, and she took the M and changed it to F as far as female. Um, as she did that and stuff like that, she enjoyed um, piano, dancing, and cheerleading and stuff like that. Um, she had support within the family and stuff like that. They told her to be true to her and be whoever you are. She started dating a guy and stuff like that. You know, this was in high school, a high school of Harvard High School. Okay, um, she was bullied, which you already know. Um, she was being bullied and stuff like that. A lot of classmates and stuff like that were being really mean to her and stuff like that. And then when she got online, people were being mean to her. And when she got, um, back to school they were being mean to her you know she was getting double bullying and I guess like I said before the sounds become too loud and the pain become too overbearing and a lot of um young teens commit suicide and stuff like that even though I'm out here and a lot of other girls are out there as well trying to you know preserve our transsexual sisters but a lot of times as much as we reach out we can't always be successful at you know the journey that we're trying to do and um that makes the 10th person that committed suicide which is a teen of this year and um, if you feel like you're a young person, well, if you are a young person or even an older person, case may be, um, there are lines out there that you could talk to someone as far as trans life. You know, trans life um, is a phone that you could call. It's one eight seven seven five six five eight eight. And we also have the Treasure Project, which is, you know, basically a youth one as well. The number there is one eight six six four eight eight. 7386. And we also have the National Suicide Prevention Life, Lifetime Lifeline. Anyway, um, that number there is 1 800 273 8255. Again, that's 1 800 273 8255. You know, um, I understand we're going into a lot of depression and stuff like that for my young trans girls who are coming out there, but when you decide that you're going to live your truth you have to also remain to be strong i want you to practice ignoring i want you to practice non-existing and when i say non-existing if people are not for you they do not exist you don't look at them you pay them no mind and if you feel as the harm is going to come to you you go to the authorities you go to someone that's in charge that can help you out of the situation and you go to someone that's going to help you as far as your principal, your counselor, or your parent. You do not need to feel like you're alone in this world. I'll give you a few numbers that you could call, you know, where you could find some of these numbers and stuff that they may have uh, some type of outreach program within your community that can help you and be there as a support group. You really don't have to feel as though you're alone in this journey and you're finding it all alone. But I do encourage you that if you want to be true to you, learn to learn the power of ignore learn the power of they don't exist they don't exist in your world prime example myself you know I could walk out to the world and people could say a lot of mean things to me if I don't pay you no mind you don't exist and I know that's 
like a way of myself saying it, you know, sometimes people say, well, you know, I cannot deal with this because it, it hurts too bad because I do hear them and I do. I want you to practice. Ignore. Ignore them. Ignore. You know, like when your parent gets on your nerves and stuff like that, and you know how to ignore them and practice having them as well. You know, and your parents got your back, so. But when it comes to people who really, you really should care nothing about, ignore them. And like I always say at the end of the day, I hate to say this, but fuck them. If they're not putting food in your, if they're not putting food in your table, not giving you money, stop making them exist. Stop making them matter. You matter more than they do. They do not matter. Keep that in mind. You have somewhere to be. You could be someone so successful, so big. You can't let these dreams destroy you, stop you from things that you're trying to get to. This is very important that you need to follow through on this. And you need to practice it until you get it in your head. When somebody walks past you go, <laughs> they call me names too. Don't think you're alone in it. I just ignore it. And if it comes to the extreme, then it'll be an extreme. <laughs> anyway, that being said, and I'm not sure this saying, go out and, you know, commit a crime. I'm saying, you have somewhere to be. And God don't make no mistakes. You are a true leader. Everybody can't possess that leadership that you have. They're jealous of it. You don't give in to them. You enjoy it. You embrace it. You know that you are a true leader within yourself. And you have the power that so many can't possess. So, that's the only food I before I want to give you. And I want to talk to you in reference to Molly Cyrus News. You know, Molly Cyrus is a person that's been, like, basically advocating as far as transsexual rights as well. I always loved her because, like I always said, I love anyone who is different, who stands within their truth. And like I always said before, you have to be true to you. And sometimes being true to you is not always as convenient as everybody wants it to be. Anyway. So of course I have to find a Molly Cyrus. I had to look it up in something there because I had to, you know, once it, I had saw something in reference to, um, she had started this, um, she went and she did a um, backyard thing in her backyard and basically it was like a trans group. What she tried to do is start this new, um, she started this new website in reference catering to the transgender youth and the use of stuff like that because she doesn't want transgenders out there, you know, committing suicide as well as what I have tried to talk to in reference to as well. Okay. Miley Cyrus started an awareness of the support group. It's for the New Happy Hippie Foundation. I'll read it again. It's called the New Happy Hippie Foundation. I'll put it right here. Okay. Um, Laura Jane, Laura Jane is a front runner and she does the music and stuff like this and I wanted you to see in reference to the song that they created in reference to tr True Trans Soul Rebel. Here's the song. being alone and people are doing everything to come to bring this together. You could be in a video, you could be doing a lot of things in reference to that as well. It's so much that you could do within this world. And let me just give you an idea of what the um, Happy Hippie is a foundation. It helps to bring awareness, raise funds for the homeless youth, um, for the LGBT youth and stuff like that. What I'm going to do is I'm going to give you a couple of slides in reference to the website and this is what the website looks like to make sure that you're on the right the right website. Here it is. Now you see there's a lot of different things on that website. It was quite much more. But I just wanted to get that little rough draft of it so you make sure you're on the right because we don't want no kind of counterfeit, you know, the fraud was trying to, you know, benefit off of this because everybody who says they're 
okay, for so you. I just want to make sure that you know that you're taking it to the right site and stuff like that. Because just like um, my sister, the transition from Wisconsin, um, Cameron, that committed suicide at the age of 15 years old, we really need to try to stop this type of um, act that they're doing within themselves. And speaking of people, the reason why I'm making sure that you know you're going to the right site is because did you know a governor in Indiana um, pushed for the religious restoration and his name is Mike Pence and he wants, he pushed for, I don't know whether it's going on or it's actually taking place, it's called the F, excuse me, the RFRA Act and it's a discrimination act for hiring anyone from the LGBT. In other words, you don't have to give them jobs, you just let them suffer. You know, and I just find it so amazing how someone could be so cold and so hard, unheartfelt and people put them in office. You know, and in, in, in the world we live in, we're supposed to be like a melting pot. You know, you didn't come to work to go to bed with your workers. You came to work to work. And I don't understand why it has to be such a slight, well not a slight, but a slight individual of giving somebody money to work now. This is the thing that gets me, which I, I find, and maybe you can help me understand. If you decide you don't want to give people jobs because of what they're LGBT and stuff like that, what do you think they're going to do for a living? Do you honestly think that people are just going to sit around and just say, oh, well, we can't, you know, we're just going to be homeless on the streets and, you know, we're just going to walk around and just hopefully they'll change their mind? Do you honestly think that black, that um, people that are LGB can't commit crimes? Do you honestly think that they can't go out and start committing murders and stuff like that? People are going to survive the best way they can. Think about how silly this is. You're stopping people from getting a job, from working. So you can, so you, this is how I think. You're stopping people from getting jobs so you can take money out their check. So you can feed all these things and of course your pocket as well, of course you're getting a cut of it. Then, if they fall out balance, they go down to the welfare system, they worked all their years to try to get some, you treat them like shit. You're down inside the welfare office, the reason why you're there is because of them, because without them you wouldn't have a check either. You treat them like shit, you get them so close to nothing for all the years that you've taken out of their check. You say fuck you, you say get out, you cut them off, and you put them on the street. So where is the balance? We have people that are willing to work, trying to work. You have people that are walking down the street that's incarcerated, they didn't even commit the crime, but yet they're in jail trying to prove they're innocent while everybody's pointing the finger saying, oh, they did it, until it's you. You know, it's just so sad to me how people find so fault in things that they shouldn't have their fault in. As far as murders, come on, killing people, so I can understand it. As far as stopping people from getting a job in Indiana, Mr. Mike Pitt, Mr. Pitt, allegedly, you know, you never know, honey. But you know, it's sad that that's where we come to. Anyway, that being said, I want to say rest in peace to my little sister, Cameron. too much for me and she's from Wisconsin and like I said before you got people out here trying don't give up on us because we're not giving up on you anyway that being said I want to say I love to hear your opinions I love to hear how you feel about this you know I always love to hear your feedback and stuff like that and I want to say that's number 15 person that committed suicide and I want to say, hello all new people, boom. I want to say, oh people, bam. And I want to thank you for watching, thank you for subscribing. I want you to do you. I want you to do the best with that you can. And if nobody don't like it, then fuck them. <laughs>